everybody, this is Gail. Welcome to my live stream tonight. We're going to be talking about how to make a souvenir box out of your travel brochures. It's a real cheap, easy craft, and literally, it takes pennies. As you all know, I've just come back from a road trip going from here in Virginia over to New Mexico to see my new grandbaby, my adorable, sweet, cute, wonderful grandbaby. And on the way, I picked up some travel brochures and I have some left from a previous trip that I took. So I thought I would show you all like what I do with old travel brochures because there's only going to be so many times that you can reread them or reuse them. So upcycling used items uh, is a great way to keep those vacation memories going long after your vacation is over. And this is a craft project that like anybody can do. I'm just gonna be kind of holding it up as I go through this here. Busy lady is here. Hi, busy lady. I hope you're having a good weekend. Holiday weekend too, right? It's Columbus Day or Indigenous Peoples Day, whichever you want to celebrate on Monday. Um, so this is just a real easy little cheap craft project to do. Um, to get started, all you need is white glue, a pair of scissors. You probably already have scissors at home. Um, travel brochures. In my case, I'm going to use a big, thick guidebook that I have scribbled on and written on and taken notes and all of those little things that I don't need anymore. So it's not that. And a box. Let's see who all's here. Oh, this is not live. It is live. That is awesome. Peter Parker says, He's got a video with 900 views. That's awesome. Yay, congratulations. And let's see, we are also joined by Paducah and Louisville Railroaders. So, hey. Um, Busy says, how are you? Weekend is okay. Stopping by to say hi. Gonna play baske basketball with Matthew. That sounds really cool. I hope you have a fun time. It'll keep you young out there playing basketball, so good for you. Uh, oh, Paducah's got an HO scale Chattanooga train set. Oh, that is so cool. Candy the Wee Service Dog is in the house and Women's Station Channel is in the house. So hello, you all. And y'all, Women's Station Channel got a gift for my grandbaby. I've got a short video coming up next week uh, with my daughter opening the gift. And I want to say a huge shout out and thank you to that and to all of you who have helped and been so supportive. Real quick baby update, then we'll get into the craft project. She, keep her in your prayers. Uh, she's doing okay, but she's still having a little trouble growing. So like she's, she looks chunky, but she's really, really short. And this is probably the only time in her life I keep saying that we're going to be encouraging her to gain weight, right? But they're putting her on this really super concentrated, super big deal formula. And guess what? It is hard as heck to get. So I went to the website for the manufacturer and they said they don't have it in the U.S. right now, but they're hoping to get it back in stock. And I'm like... Crazy, crazy stuff. So anyway, no commentary on why we're low on formula or anything like that. Just, um, yeah, keep her in your prayers. Hopefully she'll grow and gain weight and she won't need any of this stuff. That's our plan anyway. So let's see. Oh, Peter's video is only for adults. Oh, well, that leaves me out. And let's see. Thank you. Uh, Women's Station Channel says you're welcome and praying. I appreciate that. Uh, the HO Chattanooga Steam Locomotive is a 1991 Tyco Southern Railroad number 917. Cool. Cool. And 
on the trip, I did get to go um, by Casey's, but it was a really short, quick stop. But I did get a picture I'm going to be posting on Instagram of me under the Casey's farm sign just so you know I was actually there. One of these days, I'm going to go and I'm going to actually take the time to really explore the museum and stuff again uh, to see the homestead and whatnot. It's been a few years since I've done that, but we kind of stayed a little longer with grandbaby than what we thought. So we had to hustle it getting back. So that really shorted our time to do anything. So sorry about that. All right. So all these old travel brochures that I picked up on the road trip uh, is one of the things I started doing these a um, long time ago. They're just a fun little quick gift. Um, there's really, it's only pennies because you're recycling a box that you already have. Glue is not too expensive, um, especially if you get it like around school supply season and you probably already have the scissors. So the most expensive part of it is the road trip to go get the brochures. So anyhow, first thing you want to do is take off any extra stickers or anything. And oh, Candy the Wee Service Dog, I got your message. I saw it uh, right before the live stream. And Candy had suggested, actually, she'd actually suggested a craft project. Talk about making homemade gifts for the upcoming holidays. And I think we should do that, um, but a little closer to the holidays. I think that would be a great one to do. So I'm going to put it on the list um, probably after Halloween, maybe like first first time period of November. Maybe we could talk about that. Um, oh, Peter Parker's got a Halloween video coming soon. That should be interesting. It's around the corner. This year, y'all, it is flying by. I'm kind of glad, too. It's not, you know, you don't want to wish your life away, but you do hope for better years, you know? And this is something, too, that if you've got, if you've got a friend that likes to travel, or if you have a family member um, that you need to get a little gift for, you could potentially use this as a gift. This isn't as big as one of the projects I did. Uh, I actually took a table that had a terrible top on it and I picked the table up from a thrift shop and what I did was I coated the entire table top in all of my travel brochures. It was a great conversation piece when people came over. It really was. So okay so I've got my little box and I'm going to use the top part of this magazine as the main cover for this box. I always cringe. The first time I tear something, I always cringe. So, okay. So you can just decide how you want your cover to be. You know, maybe you don't want the name. Maybe you want the main portion of the design. So just cut out what you want. I'm going to cut out the top here. And there's several ways you can do this. Like if you want to cut uh, little teeny tiny pieces, you can if, and just glue them all over. You can take bigger and smaller. There's, there's no wrong way to do your box. So all I'm going to do on that, oh, we got somebody throwing Halloween graphics in. Ah, that's so cute. Women's Station Channel is grabbing a grocery order, and she's going to be right back. I'm with you, busy lady. Bring on 23. And Candy says, sounds good, Gail. Yay. Now, if you all have, like, little shells and things that you've picked up, you can use those on the box also. This is your box. So anything that you want to do that you have from your vacation, 
teeny tiny rocks, we're just gonna be decoupaging. Or at least I think we are, if I can get my glue to work. There we go. So, you know, just place this right here. You know, it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect because you're going to be putting things all around it. And this is really pretty forgiving. You've got until the glue dries. So, there you go. Now I've got the take it outside part. I better not say that too loudly or somebody's going to hear it and come running in wanting to go outside and that would be Pacer who is Pipsy. Isn't it funny the names you come up for your dogs? Christmas is about two months away I'm being reminded. Ah! That gives me hives just thinking about it. Okay, so I am cutting these apart and I'm going to totally move them around, but I'm going to put them aside and save them for later because I want that uh, to go on as its own thing in just a little bit. I'm cutting Tennessee the same way. I wasn't going to keep the Tennessee part, but it says uh, the soundtrack of America made in Tennessee. So the box is kind of made in Tennessee, so I'm going to do that. Speaking of which, I understand the Tennessee Volunteers played a little game of football tonight. So congrats if you're if you're a Tennessee Vols fan. I think you won, by the way. They're coming up out of some difficulties in the nation. So I've got to try to move the map. Which is funny since we were just talking about the HO railroad train that he's got, in case he's got. So the map that I'm using is of the Chattanooga area. It's always fun to pick up maps because they're just so handy for just all kinds of different things. And I have even used them as wrapping paper for gifts with kids. So older ones though, I wouldn't do it to a new one because I tend to need new ones. Does anybody else travel with a map and GPS? Because like I'm always having to have a map and GPS. Because it's so frustrating when you get into an area that GPS doesn't work and, you know, you, you, we train ourselves to rely on things like that. Technology is our friend until it hates us, right? Ghosts are so cute. Ah, uh, okay, Peter, I, he's put all kinds of icons and things in the chat, er, emoticons in the chat. Super cute. The backpack adventurers are here. Hi, backpack adventurers. It's good to see you. I'm just kind of talking about um, what to do with your brochures to make a real quick, easy, cheap craft that just kind of keeps your vacation memories going. You now, just wanted something super fun and inexpensive to do. And, you know, you're picking the things up for free. So you're not paying any money. So that's. Most of your cost is in the glue and going to get them. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to wrap it, this one, across the bottom and kind of on the top of my box. Let's see. Hang on a second. Whoops. I was afraid I was going to do that. Let me 
I'm trying to open up a window so I can see you all better. There we go. Got two screens here. So I can now see you better. Peter says he just sleeps when he travels. No. You've got to go out and enjoy your adventures. Don't sleep through all of them. Life's too short to sleep through adventures. Right? I think our backpacking team here will back me up on that. And these boxes um, and things don't really take a lot of time, but you can, you know, make them take as long as you want to on it or as little time as you want to. You know, you are the master of your creativity. So just go for it and have fun. And you can use, you know, any little beads that you pick up, um, anything like that. All right, so I've got the back covered here. Whoops, I've also got a wrinkle. Do try to keep the wrinkles out. So if you see one and your glue has not dried, do your best to get that mean old wrinkle out of there. So, and by the way, speaking of doing things, don't you forget to give me a like on the video, please. Very, very important. That helps tremendously. Okay, so now I've covered the back of it, and I'm going to go over the front, and I'm going to loop it over just a little bit. If you have a scrap piece of fabric, you can use that to line the inside of your box. I haven't decided if I'm going to do that or not because you can also uh, just cover the inside of the box with little pieces of travel brochure. Okay, so I am coated this in glue. You can see that part of the glue is running out here. Cut it in glue. There we go. And I am pushing this down. I've got this extra here. I am gonna go ahead and cut some of that off with my scissors. And I'm cutting it kind of haphazardly. And I am going to then use this little piece over the edge here just to kind of cover just a little bit. Okay, so I've got this little bit of box showing and this little top edge. I really don't like the top edge, so I'm going to put glue on it, come on both sides there, along the edge, and on the inside of the box, right like that. And then this piece, I'm going to stick right on top of here. And I'm gonna fold it down over the edge. And so that's gonna help protect my box just a little bit. Just the edge. The edge is gonna take a little bit more wear and tear. So when we go through and I I'm going to add some more glue onto this loose corner here. So when I go through, um, after I get all this in place the way I want it, I'm going to go through and I'm going to coat the whole thing in a couple of coats of the glue. And that's going to decoupage everything down and give it a really nice finish. So, okay. Pretty ugly so far, huh? How do I click on other channel links? Backpack Adventures wants to know. Um, okay, and okay, Women's Station is back. She says, I'm back. That's looking pretty gay. Oh gosh, $74 for a bag and a half of groceries. Whoa, yeah. Groceries are through the roof. Everything is really high. Um, going back to the Backpack Adventures channel. Let me see. 
If you were on a desktop, you can go over and you see the ellipsis, those three little dots. Click on that ellipsis, um, the right click, and then um, it'll give you go to channel, report, remo remove, and just click to go to channel. So there you go. I hope that helps. I wish I could demo it, but I can't screen share with YouTube Studio. So if anybody knows how to do that, let me know. I don't think it's something that you can do on mobile. I think you have to be on a desktop to do it. So I'm putting a little bit of glue underneath my flap here. I'm just going to glue it down pretty good. Always want to secure your edges really, really well. Because if you don't, that just leads to problems later, and you don't want problems later. Life's well, too short to deal with problems. You go on vacation and you travel to have fun, not to come back and deal with box problems. Right? So, okay, at the bo bottom of the box, almost covered. There's still a few pieces, but that's okay. And I have the top of the box. So, there we go there. And the rest is just cutting out little pictures that I like. Let's see if there's anything on this brochure. Uh, I try to pick out places that I've been that I like. And I like to cut out strong words. So, go ahead. I never, I never know for sure what words I'm going to use, so I go through it and cut out all the ones that I find that are big and bold, like that one. And I like the word downtown over here. So I'm just going to cut that out. So I'm not a roller coaster gal, but I have been to Rock City, so I'm going to cut that part out. The roller coaster was from Lake Winnipesoka, right there on, right there in Georgia, right across the Tennessee line there in Chattanooga. And if you are not perfect cutting this out, do do not worry about it, okay? Because I, you can keep covering it up and keep putting the layers on it until you're happy with it. So if it's if you're not cutting straight, it's not going to matter because you're going to keep moving these things around. Um, you're going to layer pieces on top of pieces. It's just don't worry about it if your cuts aren't perfect. Life is too short to worry about imperfections in cut pieces of paper on a project like this. It's just way too short. Don't y'all agree? Let's see. Yes, Busy Lady says life is way too short to deal with problems. You got it. Yes, you can. Um, Tanya Lambert is saying you could use Mod Podge craft glue as well. And yes, you can. That works. Busy says I need a hobby to make some cash. LOL. I just can't decide. Oh, there's so many ways. Uh, Tanya says, only know a few stitches. I can make scars. There you go. Backpack Adventures is saying homemade patterned heat packs are a big demand. Um, busy Lady saying shoot out ideas, please. Tanya saying, Gail, did you get the box? I do not have the box. It will come on Tuesday because we got the mail hold to deal with. So Tuesday, I should get the box. Tanya sent a box of things uh, to go to my grandbaby. That's what she's talking about. So super stoked about that. And super stoked about the grandbaby. 
Okay, so again, I'm just going through here, um, looking for pictures that I like. If you have your own pictures, you can certainly print those out and put them on here. One quick thing about home printers, though, if you do this project, is your pictures, the, the print doesn't last that long, so it will fade over time. Time can be a relatively short thing when we're doing a project like this and you're printing the pictures off on the computer. So just be aware that within a few months or so, um, that can start fading on you. But you can do it. There is no wrong and no right way to do this. Right in some people's views. Anyway. So busy lady wants, wants craft ideas that she can take up a hobby and make some money. Y'all are an idea crew. Oh, and this is the one I just cut out. Y'all are an idea crew. Toss it out there. Also, if you're not in our Facebook group, ah! also, if you're not in our Facebook group, come over and join us, okay? It is facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash Gale Vlogs. So you just got to come over and join us. We're a great group, don't y'all think? We've got several people in here. We've got Candy, Women's Station Channel, Chanya, Dizzy Lady, all of our group members. I'm going to put that link here in the description box. So, thumbs up and join the group. So, I got the mountains here going on. And let's see, um, Busy Lady. One, one craft that you could do is uh, jewelry. You know, I sort of, with you all's help, was able to sell that. And that's, uh, as you know, a large portion of my service dog that's over here. He's laying in the floor, decorating the floor in the hallway there. Um, large part of that was because of jewelry. So that's an option. You know, I got to get this too. But I'm, I'm probably not going to use this whole page. So I'm just going to cut it. Pinterest, they have a ton of ideas. Oh my gosh, yes, yes, yes. Tanya is just pointing out about Pinterest. Pinterest is a dangerous website for anybody who crafts or wants to craft or is thinking about craft. Let's see. I was going through here picking out pictures. Whoops. There's ah, one on caving. There's another one with waterfalls. I've got to get that. Tennessee has some freaking amazing waterfalls, y'all. If you ever come to Tennessee, try to make time to go see a waterfall. They are plentiful. You, know, you can go through the Smokies, anywhere in East Tennessee. You know, they're just, we've got tons of them, tons and tons. And they're all gorgeous. Okay, so I got to get that waterfall. Let's see what else we got. Um, resin drink coasters with botanical flowers in them. Those sound gorgeous. Um, busy lady says Hus hubby has something in mind I could help build. I'm not good at crafts. I need instructions. LOLs. Tanya's saying making hats. That will probably be good um, any time of year, but like with with winter coming up, if you make winter hats, that would be good. Okay, and here's a little section that's just in with some other pictures. So I'm going to clip that. 
Life is not all sunshine and rainbows, but your box can be. Let's see. I like soups. Tanya, hot cocoa is neat too. Uh, there was, there's a woman I used to know like years ago. Uh, she was older. I don't even know if she's, I don't know if she's even still around now, but one of her things that she would always take to craft shows was her bean soup. And she only used dried beans and she layered it in these mason jars with the instructions on how to cook it. So it was all dry beans and there was like pintos and navy beans and, and black beans and you name it. And she used a little bag like I would use for jewelry like that. And she would put in some seasonings in with it. And so that's what she sold at Christmas. And she, she used to do pretty well on it. I don't remember how much she charged. But I'm sure it wasn't a whole lot compared to some things. And here's the thing. If you do something like that, you can always use them as Christmas gifts later if you don't sell them off. Just so. So I'm trying to think what all I've seen done at craft shows. Um, Tanya's making wreaths. And Laurel is like the queen of, of all things art. So crocheted items probably go pretty good. There, there's a sun sunset or sunrise. I'm gonna cut this. So I've got two of those. One says explore the land. So I'm going to cut that out. Oh, do not clip your hand. So you can't see it because I want to talk to you while I do this, but I've got kind of two stacks going on. Uh, one stack is pictures that I'm cutting out. And my other stack is words that I'm coming out because I may come back to the words here in a few minutes. And generally, I go through and I use, I, I just cut out a lot more pictures and words than I use because I never know for sure what I'm going to use until I get there. Let's see. Um, let me see. I'm going to go back to the chat and see what y'all are talking about. Let's see. Um, I have a great taco seasoning from allrecipes.com, Tanya's saying. A busy lady says she loves that life, uh, that site, rather. Uh, you can do shaving gifts, anything you can put in a jar. Uh, and then talking about selling them on Etsy, eBay, local flea market. A backpack adventurer says Etsy fees are quite a lot. Uh, she was on there. eBay is good. Amazon are all places you can sell. Amazon actually has a handmade section to it and you sign up with them and you send them a picture of your studio with you working in it. And I thought that was cool. Tony says she's going to work all winter for shelf sustainable gift ideas in a jar. That's good. Um, Women's Station Channel says wrong site, but here it is. Um, Budget Bites Taco Seasoning. Here we go. Sell them at thrift stores, craft sales, flea markets, and maybe even online. Yep. Those are all good things. Um, I tell you one thing. Uh, our mission team, one of the things, like our best fundraiser on the planet, going for like two different teams in two different places, was Christmas cookies. I don't know. You'd have to look and see what the rules are in your area. But we made and took orders for Christmas cookies last year. And, all, well, two years now, uh, one for the 2019 trip. And then last year to raise funds for the youth. And everybody wanted those Christmas cookies. We did your choice of chocolate, sugar, or white chocolate peppermint. 
We sold those like crazy. So that might be something to look into. Okay, I got to get this. You can part, hear it, hear. You know me, I got to get the you can part of this. Because too many people are like, I can't travel, I can't afford to travel, I can't travel by myself, I've got a disability, I'm prohibited from doing lots of things. And I think that most of the time you actually can, 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 can do it. So I got to get these words you can. Very important. And of course, sometimes if you're like me, you also risk falling into a cactus, but that's why you have a service dog to keep you from doing that. Tense moment, people. That was a tense moment. Okay. Okay, I'm just going to tell you something, too. If you're in Tennessee, Tennessee has this new thing. Tourism has come out with it. And these are actually, this is a booklet, and they have the booklet at the Welcome Centers, too, where you go around to these different places, and you can get stamps. It's kind of like that National Park book that I'm always talking about that I just freaking love, except this is kind of free. There's not as many places, but if you go buy them, you can get your book stamped. So some of the places across Tennessee, um, the birthplace of country music in Bristol, East Tennessee History Center, uh, Dollywood in Pigeon Forge, Dolly Parton statue in Sevierville, George Jones Museum, George Jones Museum, uh, Country Music Hall of Fame in Nashville, um, Beale Street, which is in Memphis, and the Bluebird Cafe, which is also in Nashville, Johnny Cash Museum, also in Nashville. But there's a lot of places and they're sc scattered throughout Tennessee. So if you are going and you're going on a road trip and you're looking for some free and cheap souvenirs, these kinds of things are great. If you don't, if, if you can't pick one of these up or if you want to put multiple states or multiple places, you can get your own book. Cover it like we're covering this box and use that. So I am going to use, I'm going to cut out some of these. I don't know if I'm going to use some of these, but I'm going to cut them out just in case. And there's one of a music instrument right here, so I'm going to cut that out. You know, it's kind of scrapbooking um, with your travel brochures. It's just a neat way to upcycle them to help you keep your memories of your trip going. It's just a cheap, cheap craft. Um, okay, you have to draw a good backpack and backpack saying not too hard with Procreate. I'm going to have to check into that one. Uh, sounds too fancy for this woman. Oh, you never know. I'm looking to buy an Incredibox in Tennessee, Gail. We'd be neighbors. <laughs> well, we might be neighbors, but I may, I move a lot. So, um, Tony was going to do the current the cookies in a jar. Then they would add the wet ingredients and a cookie add a cookie cutter to the top of the jar on the outside. That sounds like a neat idea. I've also seen it done um, with hot chocolate mixes where they put the dry hot chocolate in it, and then they put like the fluffy marshmallows. And I've seen that done two ways. One as jars for like a family hot chocolate mix. And then I've seen it done in the bags that you use for cake decorating. And they just kind of put some chocolate chips in the bottom of it, then the chocolate powder and marshmallows and stuff, and then tied it with a real pretty ribbon. So that was cute. Ah. I'm putting things in the wrong place here. 
You just have to put not from the commercial kitchen. You know, a friend of mine, when we did wedding cakes together, but what she did to get around the kitchen requirement was she rented a health department approved kitchen for some of her cooking, but she did like sauces and some bigger things. So uh, I think she used one at a church that was that was approved. So that might be an option if you cook and you need to, um, to do a kitchen. But I'll tell you, those Christmas cookies just about sold themselves. And they got like uh, $12 a box, I'm thinking. And I know we ordered some of the boxes. I ordered some of the boxes off of Amazon for Christmas gifts a few years ago because I only needed a few boxes. They got theirs from a place called Uline, U-L-I-N-E, and they bought like, I don't know, I think it was 200 of them. It was a freaking huge box that they needed most all of them by the time they got finished selling those cookies. So something like that. And busy, some of the jewelry that I made was really easy. Busy says she should bake some stuff and see how it does and that she likes baking. Go for it. Go for it. And pumpkin rolls are all the thing right now. And I know you like pumpkin spice. You know, do, do a couple. Try out the recipe first. Get somebody to take it to work and hand out, you know, samples. I've seen that done before. Um, I will tell you too on the on the cookies. Stellar Piper needed to raise money for a flute because she needed one, and we just couldn't afford one as fancy as what she needed. So we went over to the convenience store across the street from where we lived. It was a little mom and pop convenience store, and they let her put the, a little basket of cookies out there, and did really well. She put a note on. She said you know, what she was fundraising for, but she did really, really well. She bought the flu. So if, if you know of a mom and pop store, that might be an option. Um, Tanya says on request, she'll also try to have gluten-free, gluten-free, sugar-free items available. Ooh. Um, nutrition. Busy lady said she made some beaded bracelets a few years ago. That was pretty fun. Cool. Customizing the available freezer meals to the season is good. Be able to vary with diet menus works well. There you go. All right, so I got to get these words, Hall of Fame. Again, I don't know for sure if I'm going to use all of these. I, I'm sure I won't, but I know I won't if I don't cut them out. One thing you do want to have handy when you're doing this is a large trash bag. Let's see. Be able to bury menus. Finger crochet with, oh, that's a good one. Finger crochet with the chunky, yep. excuse me, I'm hiccuping right in the mic, I'm sorry. Okay, uh, finger crochet with the chunky yarn. There are tutorials on how to do this. Candy Lee Service Dog has it. Oh, something else too. Uh, have you ever made a rag of bread? Anybody? Anybody here made a rag bread? Because the one I did, I got all of my stuff at the thrift shop. Old um, skirts that were wool, because you really want wool. So old skirts that were wool, 
old jackets, men's suits, anything with a wool content. Um, super cheap. Super, super cheap. And on some of the little thrift shops, if you tell them that you want something specific, um, they can put it aside for you and can give you a, a price on the bag, especially if it's something that they don't sell a lot of, like wool in the South. So that was a big thing. Um, and if you know a craft, you may not have to, you may not have to sell them at all. Uh, you could maybe give lessons. Okay, so this is, this is pretty. It's rows and rows of bracelets that they've made, but the color and the texture is pretty. So I'm going to cut out some of this to use just here and there in the box. It doesn't specifically say travel, but it's pretty and colorful, and there's no telling where some of this is going to wind up anyway, where in my box it's going to wind up. So you don't have to look for just words, um, but textures. Like I just cut this piece out. That's a really nice texture. This is actually a photograph of a somebody's leather chair. Oh, look, here we go. Same person. Oh, busy. These ripped jeans. Do you know how to sew at all? Because one of the things that I did one time um, when I was working in a thrift shop was we took the little girls' jeans and made them into purses. And all we did was cut the pants of them off, you know, kind of at the crotch, cut the pants portion off, uh, sew a string seam there, and then make straps out of the, you know, the legs of the jeans and sewed those on. And then a little bit of Velcro. Cute, 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 cute. So, okay, I think I'm going to add, I think I'm going to put a hold on cutting for the minute. And I may just lie. Okay, never mind. I saw something else I like. This is an outline of Tennessee. Oops. Oh, uh, this has got some of my notes scribbled on the page behind it. Hold on. Let me make sure I don't need this. No, I don't. Okay, got that. Yeah, and one of the reasons why I have so many brochures is because I'm always scribbling notes on my stuff of things that I want to do, double checking times, things like that. So one, it's one of the things if you get travel brochures, you know, they're there for you to use and you can use them tons of different ways. And if you put notes on them, then you can also get an idea of what you might want to go back to do. Surely I'm not the only person that makes notes on trips. I actually have Google spreadsheets on them where I've got notes of like things to do across Interstate 40 from Virginia to New Mexico, things like that. Because you can always find free and cheap things to do in any town that just really helps to stretch that budget. And it makes it for a more interesting trip. And what I like doing 
thing too, it's so cool. Like when you find something that's in a brochure and you make your notes on it so you can remember it. It's really cool to do that and then uh, surprise the locals with something that you know and they may not. My daughter and I just had a conversation uh, when I went to see her. I told her that I kind of just for grins and giggles wanted to go to the UFO craft shop site um, in New Mexico. That was over in Socorro County and not Roswell. And she was like, I don't know what you're talking about. And I'm like, you know, the UFO crash site. Like, why wouldn't you know what I was talking about? I only saw it in a brochure. No biggie. We couldn't go, but it was just nice being able to say, hey, don't you read your own brochures of where you live? I have to read Southwest Virginia. Okay. So this one, I can't decide. Maybe over here. Maybe I don't want it at all. I'm just going to add this here on the side. Did we give you any usable ideas yet, Busy? Because we're like, we're the idea group. I keep knocking, oh, I see. I've gotten it knocked loose is what it, no wonder it wants to be difficult. Okay, sorry about that, y'all. Tony's excited about a move. Good for you. New places, new things, new lives. Women's Station Channel says she's got a brain injury. She's under, I'm sorry. Um, oh, Tanya's also saying make crafts for hospitals and for cops to give ch to children like bears. Uh, Candy says also that's what she does. She said you can use women's or men's jeans also, and you can embellish the handbags with your jewelry gale. Uh, handles are a lot of fun to do with the jewelry. And just for grins and giggles, I'm going to put this over here too. Kind of balance it out. I don't always balance it out. I tend not to be a very balanced person, so. That didn't come out right. Anyway, never mind. Ignore it, ignore it, ignore it. I didn't say that. So I'm just kind of balancing out both sides here a little bit. Um, make small bears, put pearls inside them for a good smelling. Good. Okay, got potpourri would do. Thanks for watching. I never realized how hard packing is when doing it alone. Oh my gosh, packing is horrible. And it's the hidden stuff that'll get you. Like closets, oh my gosh, when I find out we're moving, I hit the closets first thing because you think, oh, there's not that much in there. But it's what's in there is kind of hidden because you don't see it every day. And let me tell you, it's just... That, that, that'll that get you, like, every time. So, first thing I do is hit the closets. Then I go through, the. do y'all ever do the thing where you go through and you put tape on the doors so you know that you've already been there and it's those are empty? I'll do that. Okay, now I'm going to put this little piece, you know, we're talking about textures. I'm just going to put this one up against it.
Maybe we should do a video on moving tips because every time I pack the trailer, I feel like I'm moving. The van is so much easier to pack, which has nothing to do with moving. It just feels like it. So let's see. What else can we think of for busy lady? I'm trying to think what I've done in the past that have done well. The cookies, the rug. Um, if you know how to decorate cakes, I never had any problem selling decorated cakes for a reasonable price. Um, Actually, learning how to decorate cakes was the best thing I ever did when my kids were young. It saved me so much money. Because parents knew immediately where they could go to get a cake that, that they were going to have to buy anyway. And I could make them a nice birthday gift for the cost of eggs, oil, a cake mix, and some powdered sugar. But people are always having special occasions. So busy, that might be something you want to think about. Okay, let me show you. This little box, I should have shown you this earlier. These little tabs on the side of the box, you're going to want to cut your paper so that it folds over the tab. So like if I do this sheet of paper, I'm going to want to go over the tabs, but I'm going to cut it so that it can fold over the edges. In fact, I think I'm just going to go ahead and do that so I can show you what I mean. I love craft glue. Busy something else. I've made it for myself. I've never sold it, but I'm sure people do. Um, bath salts. The kind that makes you smell really good in the bathtub. Because literally all you're doing on that is you're taking salt. Um, Epsom salt is common, um, but you can also do... Um, Oh, my brain just died. Wait a minute. Bath salt, sea salt. But you can also do sea salt and sell that. You can get the salt's not super expensive. And you can get cello bags and you can get the little scents at Hobby Lobby. Okay. So on this, the inside of the box here is going to take some glue, and I have cut a little slit here and a little slit here, kind of like you would a package for Christmas. And I'm just going to fold this over to cover the edge. I'm going to do that over here.
and you just kind of do it like you would you were folding a, a Christmas present. trim that just a little bit. Fold that over. So there you go. It's folded over and you're protecting the edge. Now you can also do this if you have some like patterned tape that you like. You could do it with that. You don't have to use paper. Um, you can even paint it if you'd rather paint it. So many things you can do with this. Oh, there you go. Oh, little sashes with sachet and potpourri. That might be good. Good idea. Um, people seem to like those. LOL, not me. And Tanya's gushing about her house, which is going to be great. If anybody wants to learn how to paint ceramics, I have videos on my channel. That's not hard either. True. True. I actually used to teach ceramics back a long time ago. I grew up in a ceramic studio. And when that happens, you learn to teach ceramics. Um, now, something that I used to do a long time ago when my kids were little, we lived in a medium-sized town. We lived in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Um, when they were little, I did balloon bouquet delivery. Uh, I needed something to make money, but I could still stay at home. And that was what we did. I would go to the Dollar Tree and I would get the latex balloons. Of course, now you can get the Mylar balloons. And I would put them with a little mug and a couple of things in it, or I'd get one of those great big candy bars from the store, like the monster candy bars from the store, and just tie a couple of balloons around it. And you're going to change your prices now. At the time, you know, 10 bucks wasn't a bad thing. So it would be like 10 bucks for the item and another um, $5 delivery fee. But I did a lot of those. Then we moved out into a rural area and it just wasn't going to work for where we lived. But um, that was nice because it helped people celebrate an occasion and I liked that. And I did up two or three and I did pictures of them and I would take those into the hotels and left them at the front desk. Pick your nicer hotels because when somebody comes in and it's like a birthday or a wedding or an anniversary. Sometimes people would say, hey, you know, where could I get something delivered? And then boom. I also delivered to schools too, but I bet you can't do that now. Um, that was something I didn't have to have a lot of stock or anything much on hand. And once I did the um, sample and took the photos of it and took it, then that's really, you know, all I needed. Then they would order her sample. I would just make sure to say on the pictures that I took that, um, you know, items may change due to availability or, you know, something like that. Just to kind of cover yourself in case you can't get a particular item. Let's see. Oh, Tilly is Archer's puppy. Loves ha oh, Tilly is his puppy. Archer loves having someone to play with. Yay. Gail, you've done so many things. I admire that and want to as well. 
I've had a crazy life. I'll just say that. I've gotten to do, uh, just been fortunate to do a lot of what I wanted to do. Not everything yet, of course. And, you know, keeping it reasonable here, budget and whatnot. But, you know, that was something. I actually stole that idea uh, from a friend of mine who did that. And back in high school, I had ordered some things for friends because uh, you could back back in the day, you could have things like that delivered to the schools like now. I'm sure you can't. Um, but I remember a woman delivering balloons and she had dressed up like a clown and she had her little child. I don't remember if it's a boy or a girl, but um, preschool, late preschool age. And the child brought in the bag of cotton candy. So she carried the balloons. The child carried the cotton candy. It was just a super, super cute duo. And in talking to her, I was like, I'm going to remember this. Because she was like, she wanted something that she could do when her child was young so she could stay home uh, with her child. And that was her idea. And I like the idea of helping people celebrate life. So I was just like all into that. And so when I needed to make some money when my kids were young, um, I stole that idea and I had a great time. I really did. It was it was just a lot of fun. I, I just it, it was, you know, kind of frustrating at times, too, because like I get stuck in traffic. So I learned to always allow extra traffic time especially if I was delivering like to a birthday party, something like that, that you definitely don't want to be late to. So like, you know, arrive way early and then like hide and park around the corner kind of thing. But yeah, that was fun. But we've moved so much. It's been hard to do like any one thing for long. But yeah. So anyway, on this, going back to the box here, I've covered the flaps by wrapping this around the edges well for the flaps on the box. And now one thing about it is this is not going to dry overnight. You're going to want to give it like a couple of days to dry. Okay. Because um, then once it gets really good and dry, then you're going to go over it. And you're going to put glue all around it, I mean, all over it, one portion at a time. So it will make a good, hard surface on the outside. So that's pretty much all there is. Just keep adding, you know, your things that you want to add, whatever pictures you cut out of the magazine or, you know, using your travel brochures. But I, I think too busy, you know, the key to really doing a lot of things that you want to do is um, decide what makes you happy. And for me, I like he helping people celebrate things and I like spreading positive energy. So I try to be a positive person with whatever I do. Uh, whether I was working in domestics and helping survivors of sexual assault uh, through the crisis line and running the ministry center and stuff, or, you know, delivering uh, the balloons or, or doing crafts. I wish we could stay in one place for longer, but my husband keeps getting transferred, the name of the game over there. But, um, Different things work in different areas. And part of it is just, you know, doing some experimenting too and, you know, kind of figuring out what works. Because whatever you do, it's got to suit your personality or it's not worth doing. And if you don't do something that you'll like, then you won't stick to it. And if you're going to sell stuff on a regular basis, it's, it takes a lot of work. 
I like doing YouTube videos is a lot of work too. You, you guys know that. So you know how that goes. So anyway. Um, Tony says, uh, thrift store and yard sale and estate sales to get items. And then she's selling to a friend at a wholesale price. That'll be good. Uh, Tony says, I really do not know. I guess I'm nervous about people not liking my items. Yeah, that's always a risk you run. But, you know, honestly, think of it this way. You know, if... If you're going through something, uh, somebody else is too. If you like something, chances are somebody else is going to like it too. You know, there's not going to be only one person in the world with the same view. Um, so th think of it like that and try to figure out how would you, <clears throat> excuse me, how would you find the person? <coughs> I can't talk. Oh, I hate having asthma. But how would you find the person that thinks like you, that might like some of the things that you like? Busy lady says, take care, everyone. She's going to get going. Busy, thank you for coming in. Thank you, thank you. She says, thank you, Gail, and yes. Yay. Yeah, I think it's important to just kind of match things that you like um, with what you can do. I always thought, too, it would be kind of neat to sell cars. Not like the high-pressure salesman, but, you know, to really, like, listen to your customer and try to put them in the car that's going to suit them the best because you know that's going to be how you have a happy customer and um put them in the car that they like the best and you know kind of help help improve their life you know put them in a car that they can afford and that they like i always thought that would be neat yeah but I, then i feel the same way about selling paint in a paint shop because you know you may just be selling paint, and I think it's really easy to go, oh, I'm selling paint again. But on the other hand, you know, you're helping that person improve their living environment so they can be happier with, with where they are. So you're not just selling paint, you're helping them pick out a little slice of happiness. But anyway, that's just me. I've been told I look at the world oddly. I don't care. I probably do. I mean, hey, I go out on vacation in a van. Not something everybody does at age 55, you know. It's one of those fun things, though. Anyway, my box is coming along. Uh, but you all get what I'm saying about like even selling the paint is helping somebody. Yeah, you know, I think selling houses would be cool too for the same reason as selling cars. You know, you're selling, you're selling somebody something that they're going to be happy in, you know? I said something like that to somebody when I was buying a car and they looked at me um, and kind of like, they've never thought about that. I'm like, well, you know, when you put somebody in a car, that's a good car that they can afford and they're coming to you and they don't have one, then you're helping them find a way to make their life better and they can take the kids to baseball or softball practice or whatever, whereas they might not have been able to do that before they came in and bought the car from you, you know? 
That was a new thought for the guy selling the car. I should have charged him for that piece of advice, right? Okay, take an extra little bit off the price of this car for me. Which I'm sure I got a pretty good deal on it anyway. I usually do. Let's see. Um, oh, busy. Bye. You take care. Thank you for coming in. And Tanya says why she likes finding items for her friend Jessica Antique Shop. She likes to shop. And she says, I'm a crazy person. Creative. I'm a creative person that people make me nervous, especially crowds. And Women's Station Channel says, you are one cool tick. Chick Gale, you make me want to buy a van. You know, you're a cool chick. We have got, honestly, like y'all, everybody here, y'all are awesome. And if you ever buy a van, take lots of photos because it's like so much fun. Now, with caviar that there are times when it's not as fun, like when the air conditioning went out in Oklahoma and the temperature was 100 degrees and over but for the most part I really like it and you know and we've got we've got a travel table trailer too which we use a lot when my husband's with me but I like the van I like the freedom I like the maneuverability I like being able to park it easy I'm just a van fan I do kind of wish my mom was alive, though, because I would just love to see what she would say about me being out in a van. Because it's like, I think I can hear her rolling her eyes. Pretty sure I can. What does that say when your mom's not here anymore and you still think that you can hear her rolling her eyes? Does that mean you got in trouble a lot as a kid? Um, let's see. Strangers make me nervous, and my friend Carrie will be my spokesperson. And Tanya says, I love Pipsy comments. I saw in one of your videos. <laughs> I'm finally learning him enough that I think I can come up with some of his expressions. But I got to tell you, a lab, there he's just not as expressive as Tomlin, my previous service dog, was. Because, like, Tomlin, like, from early on, you, you just, it was like you just knew what he was thinking. And he would mouth off, and he would tell you because he was a husky, and they mouth off. But... We're getting it together over here with me and Pipsy, but I'm glad you like it. He is a really sweet dog. So, and, and it's kind of hard to make a really sweet dog sound like a, a total smarty pants. But I'm trying. I've got to get another harness, though. And I've looked at so many of them online that, like, my brain started to shut down. I saw some that I really liked, but they were Italian-made and imported. And I was like, yeah, no. That's not going to work. I'm tempted, honestly, to buy the leather and see if I can figure out how to do it myself, but I don't know when I have time to learn something else. Um, I love the fact that some people are such salesmen or such people, persons. My brother-in-law is a special person. 
He's a people person and he sells cars. He loves it. And 50 not per. I, that's fine. You're good. Yeah, I think that's really cool. I, I just, I think selling cars would just be a, a neat thing to do. And houses too, for kind of the same reason. Whoops. So corners are a pain. I'm just going to tell you. Um, I just covered this little corner here with its own little piece. And it's kind of a pain, but I got it done. And I think what I'm going to have to do at this point, I, I'm going to need to let the whole box just sit for a while and let this all kind of dry. And then I'm going to come back through and I'm going to put more pieces on of different kinds and, you know, kind of finish it up. So it's going to be a work in progress for a couple of days. If you don't let plenty of time go on letting this stuff dry, then you'll have a problem. And you don't want a problem. So I hope this has been fun. I hope this has been just kind of int introductory on just kind of a different thing to do to uh, use your travel brochures and just have fun and just kind of keep your travel experience going even after you get back. So that's where I am right now. It's pretty gale. Thank you. It's fun. Let's see what else we got here. Um, understand. Oh, whoops. I'm just knocking this and winding. I'm sorry, y'all. If you suddenly can't hear me, just tell me because it means I probably knocked the microphone halfway to Kentucky. Let's see. Um... Tanya says, I understand. Archer has expressions I can clearly read, like, oh, come on, mom. And then she says, I need to learn how to edit. I need to figure out how I can download something so I can pause the video. Um, CapCut is an app that I use sometimes. It's free. Oh, okay. Hold on. I was going to hold it up and show it to you so you know what the icon looked like. I've got glue on my fingers. I don't know why I thought this would go well. Hold on. Okay. Cap cut is this one right up here where my finger is wiggling. There. That's a little more in focus. And I like this because it's free. And it's easy to use. So that's if you're going to use your phone. Um, I use Movave. Uh, I think I told you that, though, uh, which is what I use for my videos. It's like, I don't know, 40 bucks, I think it was when I bought it. But, of course, prices change and nothing's ever going down. So it's probably more than that now. Um, not here in Body and Soul does it pass. I understand Archer has expressions and clear read. Edit. Hey, TJ Bell Designs. Hey, how are you? What a great idea for travel memories. Thank you. It's just, it's kind of, it's kind of fun. And you can do like tons of these. And all of your, you know, you're using all of your brochures and stuff that you've picked up that you've, you know, used. And yeah, I'm glad you like the idea. It's a lot of fun. Boldly designs. Yeah, they are expensive. Um, I looked at those, but I may have to I may have to go that route because I just need it to be, I'm gonna guess about four inches taller. And Tanya says she's a people person in a small group or one-on-one, -on -one, but she talks more and faster 
when I get scared or panic around others. Yeah, I'm kind of like that. Like, I can go in front of a group and I can deliver a well-written speech in front of like 500, 700 people. I've done that before. Motivational work. I can do that. No problem. But I have social anxiety. So if I'm, I know, believe it or not, and if I'm around uh, people who I feel like aren't going to understand, like, let's say the nature of a head injury, how sometimes you're fine and sometimes you can't put a sentence together, then I, I just get real nervous and I start like just shutting down or rambling or saying really stupid, idiotic stuff. Um, hi Gail, can you do a live stream on or a video would be better for me on beginning to set things up for a video blog and stuff like that? Uh, sure. What kind of setup are you, are you looking for? Like what kind of tools to use for the setup? As in like selfie stick, phone, webcam, stuff like that. Say a little bit more about it because I'll try to help you whatever I can. And okay, Tony says like, like, duh, I should have read farther down. Sorry. Tony says like, why would I need a tripod that makes them something to have? What phone is better? The video on it? Or is it better to get a camera? I've been deciding if I should get a better camera tripod. I broke my phone stand for painting. Um, I'll just be straight up. Tripod, the one that I like the most um, is my Fugitech selfie stick tripod. That thing stands about four feet tall. Um, I've actually had three of them now because I lost one somewhere on the Alaska Highway. I'm sure that's where it was. And I have one in the van and one in the trailer. Um, it will hold my phone. It will hold a small camcorder. Uh, I wouldn't put an SLR on it, um, but I, you could do a small camera. Um, it comes with its own remote control that I can use with my phone. It does not work with my camcorder, but it does work with my phone. It's sturdy, um, so I can, I can do it. Also, I can lower it to about a foot and a half, two feet tall. Uh, it's Like I said, it's sturdy. That has probably been my most favorite tripod, but I cannot put it in my purse because, you know, even folded, it's like that long. If I, but for my purse, I like having a smaller one. So there's a couple of different smaller ones that I've had that I've really liked. So anyway, but yeah, I'll, I can send you the link. Uh, TJ Bell Designs says, hi, Gail, doing well, thanks, just eating dinner and watching. I appreciate you watching. I hope you're having, what are, are you having something terrific for dinner? I hear my husband in there cooking. So like, yay. I'm so excited. Um, I like using my iPhone 12 Pro, but was thinking about a digital camera. What would be the benefit of a camera? <sighs> Loaded question. Um, and it's kind of a difficult question because I invested a chunk of money into, like I had this whole camera saga. Um, first of all, I was using my cell phone and everybody was like, oh, you have to go to the DSL. You just have to, you know, that's just the way to go. So I went to a very expensive camera shop in New York. I was going to New York anyway on my $350 New York trip that I did on the bus, which was really cool several years ago. And I went in and talked to them. And so they talked me into doing a Nikon D7200, which has got a phenomenal capability of just taking magnificent photos. And, you know, TJ Bell, you dive in on this too, because I know, you know, you've done a lot of videos also. And y'all, she does some amazing jewelry work. So check her out. Um, but the thing is, it didn't have the flip out screen. And I didn't know enough to know that I needed the flip out screen. 
So that was wrong for me. And so then I thought, well, you know, one thing that you get into when you get into a DSLR is multiple camera lenses. And that's just the nature of the beast. You just, you have to have a gig bag and you've got all kinds of gear in it. So I thought, well, I've already got a couple of the lenses for the DSLR. So I will go ahead and I will do the Nikon D5500 with a flip out screen. That was a disaster because I just didn't, I couldn't think fast enough on which lens I needed for which time and the telephoto versus, you know, just a fixed. And anyway, I got very frustrated. And so that didn't work for me. So I went back to using my little Canon camcorder. It has a flip out screen. It's not nearly as expensive as the SLR and all those lenses. And I use it a lot more than I ever do any of the other stuff. So I wound up selling, uh, well, I sold the, sold the D7200. Um, gave that to my husband, and I sold the D5500 Nikon to a friend of mine and went and got this camcorder. Um, I've got two of those. It's the Canon 800, I think it is. I'll, I'll post an Amazon. It may not even still be available, but if it is, I'll post an Amazon link over in the group. But what I use by far in a way is my cell phone. So before you buy anything, I would encourage you to kind of pay attention to how you're using your equipment, whether it's a phone or a camera, and really ask yourself, you know, like, if I had a camera right now, would I be using that camera? Or am I more likely to just go ahead and stick with my phone? because it's quick and easy and convenient. So if you tell yourself that you will be using your phone, then stick with your phone. If you tell yourself that you really need to, you feel like you would use a camera or a camcorder, then go ahead and, and make that investment. But personally, I just went ahead and I find myself using my phone so much that um, I don't know that I would make a huge investment in a camcorder. But the way I use it is I'm out and about. If I was just doing um, craft videos and videos at home, I might use a camera more. Let's see what TJ Bell says. Uh, she says, we're having barbecue steak. Ooh, barbecue is wonderful. Um, onion mashed potatoes and my daughter made a casserole with stovetop stuffing broccoli, a can of cream, a can of chicken soup, and cream corn. That sounds really good. TJ, that sounds like really good. I've never heard of onion mashed potatoes, though. Of course, I'm allergic to onions, but my husband is like, he freaking loves onions. So I may have to remember that to mention it to him. Okay, Tawny says she loves using her phone, but has no pause or edit ability. Um, edit ability, I use, now I have an Android, um, but for editing on my phone, I use the CapCut and really like that. Um, the pause, I'm surprised that you don't have a pause feature on your phone's video. Like, let me pull mine up. So, like on mine, and y'all bear with me here. Okay. Let's record. When it records, this little extra tab right next to the record button, that's the pause feature. So, you may have it and not realize it because. I had it on here and it took me a few months to figure out what that feature was. I'm not going to lie. I'm not the brightest bulb in the bunch sometimes. No pause on iPhone 12 Pro. Okay. There, um, dig around 
I'm not super familiar with an iPhone at all, but dig around through some of the um, maybe groups and forums and see if there's anybody can suggest maybe a different app to use for recording. That's a possibility. My phone 14 doesn't have it either. Okay. I bet there's an app. Okay, and TJ saying that she uses her iPhone attached to her light ring that's hanging from the ceiling with wire. Working with a touch, I have to keep it out of the way. It was yummy. I bet it was. I'm going to mention that to him. Because like for church dinners and stuff that they have sometimes, I'm not here. He has to cook it and he would probably delight in having onion potatoes. Can you record in YouTube Studio? Yes. What you can do is you can record in YouTube Studio on your phone, upload it as private, and then download it later and edit it in CapCut. That might be an option for you. Uh, Tony says, that's a good idea, TJ. I was trying to figure out how I was going to get enough light on my painting table without having big lamps everywhere. Ring lamps are great, but there is one disadvantage uh, to ring lamps if you wear glasses. And that is you get the circular highlights. And that's one of the reasons why I've started wearing hats more often is because it cuts that and I don't have as much of the circles in my glasses. Like, see, when I take it off, then I really get into the circles. <laughs> but when I put it on, you know, it, it really takes care of that. What's the purpose of the editing and why do you do it? Oh, and TJ says she has a little clicker to stop her video. Hey, now, the, those little clickers are like gold. And that is one thing that like I, I've had to buy extra little remotes and keep them everywhere because I keep losing them. But they're great. Um, editing just makes your video a whole lot smoother. And you can also do some basic work in, in YouTube Studio as far as um, just cutting out portions. If you need to clip a little portion out, you can do that in YouTube Studio. Just worry it'll cause a seizure. The editing or using the remote to stop the video. Um, using a remote to stop the video um, it just stops it. It's not really, really like in your face. I have not ever had a problem with it. I'll just say that. Now, some of the LED lights, um, I had a problem with a set of those when they started shorting out because they were flickering. And I was like, oh, that one's got to go. But I probably use that thing for going on to three years, I guess, before it started going out. So, yeah, those remotes, like TJ's mentioning, those are freaking amazing. I even did an, an unboxing on it because I had to be, get like a set of two or three because I kept losing them. And TJ is saying that AB Shutter 3 works with her iPhone. So that, that might be worth looking into. You know, I really can't help that much with iPhones because I'm an Android. But yeah, that is something that you'll want to watch out for. Um, but the remote hasn't bothered me at all. But the, when, it, when the LED light went to short out, that was an issue. But any light bulb when it got when it starts going out that's an issue for me so. but yeah we can we can talk about it some more i can do some little videos um not a problem so yeah 
All right, well, I'm going to let this box sit over here and dry. And then tomorrow and over the next couple of days, I'll put more stuff on it. And then I'll come back and show you all in a couple of days and see what it's like, see what the finished product is. Oh, you think she fried the onions? Okay, that would not have occurred to me either. I was assuming they were like boiled in with the potatoes. So good, because uh, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna pass this on to him. I want to do better videos, but I'm not sure how. That's a really hard thing, because um, I think too, like I struggle with that. You know, part of it's storytelling, part of it's your personal style, part of it is what you want to do and how you want to do it. it. It's really tough. Hey, Paducah and Louisville Railroader is here. Hi again. Welcome. We just started talking, so I'm still here. And Tanya's here. So, but I think I'm going to go though, because my husband's in there finishing dinner. That's the neat thing about talking to y'all on Saturday nights because one of the neat things about talking to y'all on Saturday nights is because he cooks for me. So most of the time, that's a good thing. Well, it doesn't help that my YouTube channel has a bunch of this and that on it as well as craft videos. I'm a bit scattered, I guess. Um, I think isn't that called a lifestyle channel? So it kind of goes with what you're what you're going through and doing at the time because like mine's an eclectic mix. I got everything from where I was going through the breast cancer scare to COVID to crafting to travel. You know, it's a mix. So, but anyway, oh thank you all for hanging out with me tonight. I I really appreciate it. Uh, I hope you guys have fun with whatever you decide to do with your travel brochures. And thank you all for coming in. And again, give me a like on the like button. So just hit that thing for me. And do come over to our Facebook group if you haven't already. And make sure you subscribe if you haven't done that either, okay? Thanks for watching. Always hashtag be bodacious, which means you're not going to let life get in the way of living. Ta! Okay, good night, y'all. Have a great week. Bye.